Hi, thank you for joining us today. My name is Carol Girard. I am the Senior Director of the Regulatory Approvals and Compliance Directorate at the Canadian Transportation Agency. The purpose of this presentation is to assist persons who advertise prices of their services for travel within or originating in Canada. It provides general information and guidance to advertisers on the regulatory requirements specified under Part 5.1 of the Air Transportation Regulations. While you, we hope you will find this presentation instructive, we encourage you to read the regulations in their entirety in order to gain a full understanding of all of the Air Services price advertising requirements. Before I get to the specifics of the regulations, I will speak a little bit about the Canadian Transportation Agency. The agency is an independent administrative body of the Government of Canada. It performs two key functions within the federal transportation system. As a quasi-judicial tribunal, the agency resolves both informally and through formal adjudication a range of transportation-related disputes, including accessibility issues for, the, for persons with disabilities. It operates like a court when adjudicating disputes. As an economic regulator, the agency makes determinations and issues authorities, licenses, and permits to transportation carriers under federal jurisdiction. Among other activities, the agency administers a licensing regime. It also administers a permit system for international charter operations and an enforcement program which ensures ongoing compliance with the provisions of the Canada Transportation Act, the air transportation regulations, and the personnel training for the assistance of passengers with disability regulations. While administering international air tariffs, the agency ensures that bilateral agreements are implemented fairly while balancing the interests of all parties. The agency also participates in the negotiation of air transportation agreements between Canada and other countries. It resolves complaints related to the air carrier's application of its terms and condition of carriage set out in its tariff. It ensures that air carriers licensed to operate services to, from, or within Canada meet le the legislative requirements in place to protect air travel consumers. The agency can also order air carriers to remove undue obstacles to the mobility of persons with disabilities. Finally, the agency is the Canadian Aeronautical Authority on matters related to the economic regulation of air carriers. Now, I will give you a quick history on how we got here today. In December 2011, the Government of Canada announced that the Canadian Transportation Agency would develop regulations requiring all-inclusive air price advertising. The agency took a broad, inclusive, and transparent consultative approach throughout the regulatory process. Before drafting the amendments, the agency held face-to-face -face meetings with industry, consumer interest groups, and representatives of certain provincial and foreign governments. The agency also made use of Web 2.0 technology and held an online consultation to gather input from all stakeholders and individual Canadian consumers. The input received helped guide us develop the amendments. The proposed regulations were pre-published in Part 1 of the Canada Gazette in late June with a 75-day public comment period ending in mid-September. The majority of the comments received were strongly supportive of the amendments. The regulations requiring all-inclusive air price advertising came into force on December 18, 2012. Now I will speak to the objectives of the regulations. By requiring the display of the total price, the regulations reduce confusion and frustration as to the total price and increase transparency. They also allow consumers to more readily conduct price comparisons and make informed choices. The regulations promote competition by achieving a level playing field for all persons who advertise the price of air services within or originating in Canada. The regulations apply to any person, regardless of legal status or nature of business, who advertises the price of air services for travel within or originating in Canada through any media. They apply to individuals, companies, 
corporations or partnerships, Canadian and foreign air carriers, travel agents, tour operators, online travel agents. The regulations do not apply to air cargo services. They also do not apply to prices that are negotiated between parties and are not available for purchase by the general public. For example, they do not apply to fares available through corporate travel offices and not available to the general public, nor the charter services that are negotiated with a private business or to fares that are displayed to travel agents by the global distribution system. Air services that are excluded from the application of the Air Transportation Regulations and the Canada Transportation Act are also not covered by the regulations. Neither do they apply to the media provider, that is a media provider that acts solely as the means for an advertiser to advertise the price of an air service, such as the newspaper providing advertising space to an air carrier or travel agent. Package travel services are also excluded from the regulations. These typically involve the bundling of travel services for sales, such as combining air travel, accommodations, car rental, and tour features. The agency considers such bundled services to be excluded where the air service cannot be purchased separately. Where components of a package travel are offered through the same advertisement as standalone travel services that can be purchased individually, only the air service component must adhere to the regulations. Should a service of minimal value be added to an air service, it may be considered as incidental to the service and, as such, requiring that the advertiser comply with the requirements. The regulations also do not apply to air services originating outside Canada. They only apply to the advertising of prices for air service within or originating in Canada. The agency considers that the regulations also do not need to apply to situations where there is a non-monetary component that forms part of the payment towards the purchase of an air service. This would include advertising the price of air services by loyalty reward programs, which requires the redemption of points in exchange for air services. Finally, the regulations do not cover advertising where the Canadian public has not been targeted. For example, for carriers having multiple geographical specific versions of their website, only the Canadian version would need to comply. Now let me define what an advertisement is. An advertisement refers to any representation of the price of an air service for travel within or originating in Canada for the purpose of promo promoting or selling that air service to the general Canadian public. I will now explain what needs to be included in an advertisement of the price of an air service. It must include the total price, inclusive of all taxes, fees and charges, that a consumer must pay to the advertiser to obtain the air service. The price must always be in Canadian dollars, but it may also be expressed in another currency. The ad must also include the point of origin and destination of the air service. The agency considers that an advertisement must clearly indicate the cities between which the advertised air service is applicable. The ad must also indicate whether the advertised price is for one way, that is a trip from one place to another in one direction, for one trip, that is a trip from one place to another and back, usually over the same road, or for each way, that is one leg of a round trip. The advertisement must also include any limitations on the period during which the advertised price will be offered and any limitation on the period for which the service will be provided at the price advertised. For example, the start and end date applicable to the availability period for the advertised price. If there is no limitations, it must be indicated in the advertisement. An ad needs to in include the proper name and amount of each third-party tax, fee or charge relating to the air service. Any published tax, fee or charge related to air service that is not collected by the advertiser but must be paid at a departure, in transit or arrival point in order for, con for the consumer to travel must also be included. For example, this can include a departure tax. 
the advertiser must, at a minimum, based on the review of published sources of information, indicate the name of such charges in the advertisement. Finally, the advertisement must include each optional service offered for which a fee or charge is payable, and it must be displayed as a total price of, or range of total prices. For example, in-flight meals for $4.99 to $11.99. An optional service generally refers to an option, service, or amenity offered by an advertiser that can be selected by the consumer and that is supplemented to the services included in the advertised total price of the air service. It is a service that the consumer is not obligated to purchase. Later in my presentation, I will describe each of those elements in more detail and provide visual examples of ads that comply with the regulations. Let's touch on how the total price must be presented. The regulations require that the advertisement of the price of an air service be displayed as a total price that a consumer must pay to obtain and complete the air service. The tax generally includes any amount levied on a product or activity by any government at any level, whether foreign or domestic. It includes amounts assessed by government agents and collected on their behalf. A tax must be applied on a per passenger or per value basis to the air service. The agency recognizes that there are unique circumstances where some taxes, fees and charges can increase or decrease on short notice immediately before or after the advertiser has posted the advertisement. Should such unforeseen changes occur, the advertiser must exercise best effort to update the advertisement as soon as possible to reflect the change. The agency considers that the total price must also be the first price presented to the consumer. For example, having to hover a mouse over a price advertised on the website to view the total price is not acceptable. When asking for the price of an air service using a customer service telephone line, the first price given to the consumer by the representative must be the total price inclusive of all taxes, fees, and charges. As mentioned earlier, the regulations also require that a consumer have access to the price of any optional service offered by the service provider. As is the case for the total price, the price or range of prices displayed for each optional service or range of optional services must include all taxes, fees, and charges. In addition, the price must not be advertised in a manner that could interfere with the ability of a person to readily determine the total price that must be paid for the air service. The agency is of the opinion that, in order for a person to readily determine the total price that must be paid for an air service, that total price should be at least as predominant as any other pricing information disclosed in the ad. I'm now going to talk about air transportation charges. The regulations require that the total price include the air transportation charges and third-party charges, that is the tax, fees, and charges, that must be paid to obtain the air service. Air transportation charges represent every fee or charge that must be paid upon the purchase of the air service, including the charge for the cost of the air carrier of providing the service but excluding any third-party charge. An advertiser may voluntarily choose to break out an air transportation charge, such as base fare or any payment that must be made to a travel agent upon the purchase of an air service, and itemize the respective amounts of each of these items in their advertisement. If a breakdown of carrier cost charged to consumers are provided in writing in the advertisement, it must appear under the heading air transportation charges, not under taxes, fees, and charges. Note that Canadian navigation surcharges, fuel surcharges, and travel agent fees are considered to be air transportation charges and cannot be displayed as a tax nor appear under third party charges. Now on the display of third party charges. 
These amounts must appear in writing under the heading Taxes, Fees and Charges. The advertiser must use the proper name for any third-party charges that it is applicable to the air service, such as goods and services tax. However, the agency considers it acceptable to use commonly known acronyms to describe the name of those costs. For example, the goods and services tax can be described as GST, but not as federal tax. Or to use a translation of third-party charges in either official languages. The term tax may only be used to express a tax collected by the advertiser on behalf of the federal, provincial, local or foreign government and remitted to the third party. The term tax can only be used under the heading taxes, fees and charges and not under the heading air transportation charges. The third party charge must not be referred to by a name other than that it established a name. However, there are exceptions to this requirement depending on the type of media used to advertise the air service. All advertisements placed in non-interactive media must provide a readily accessible location where the breakdown and amounts of third-party charges can be readily obtained. The advertisement might, for instance, make reference to the Air Nair Carrier's website where a consumer can review the third-party charges and provide a toll-free number a consumer can call to speak to an air carrier representative. When the characteristics of the traveler, such as the province of purchase, are not known at the time of the advertisement, the agency recognizes that it may not be possible to accurately calculate all third-party charges. In these circumstances, the agency expects that the amounts advertised would represent a reasonable approximation of a thrip that can be booked by the general public targeted in the advertisement. In the case of advertisement via interactive media, the breakdown of the names and amounts of third-party taxes, fees and charges must be available in the advertisement. I will now cover the manner in which prices can be advertised for every type of service. As noted previously, the regulations require that an advertiser indicate whether the advertised air service is offered on a round trip or one-way basis. They allow an advertiser to advertise a round trip service on an each way basis. In this instance, the price must be displayed on an each way basis and shown as representing 50% of the total round trip price. The advertiser must also be clear in the advertisement that the advertised price is obtainable only if both directions are purchased. Ads for prices for optional incidental services must display the total price of those services. Examples of optional services could, could be checked baggage, in-flight entertainment, and meals and beverages. When such services are available, the ad must identify what is being offered as well as the price or range of prices for each service. Where a range of prices are available for an optional service, such as range of meal prices, and the characteristics of the traveler are unknown, such as the province of origin, the upper end of the displayed price range should incorporate a reasonable approximation of the maximum cost, inclusive of the maximum taxes that could apply to the described service. Ads placed in non-interactive media must provide a readily accessible location where all information about the price of optional incidental services can be readily obtained. The ad might, for instance, refer to an air carrier's website where a person can obtain the price details of such services or a telephone number a person can call to speak to an advertiser representative to get this information. Ads placed in interactive media can provide a direct link to the advertiser's website, to a page containing the price, or a range of prices for each optional incidental service. The optional services could also be integrated into the carrier's online booking system. As I mentioned earlier, 
the regulations require the disclosure of any published taxes, fees and charges required to be paid by the consumer upon arrival or departure at an airport, but not collected by the advertiser. If the consumer will be required to pay a tax, fee or charge that the advertiser does not collect, that is an additional foreign tax the consumer must pay before leaving the foreign country's airport, such as a departure tax, the advertiser must indicate, at a minimum, the name of such costs. Examples of published sources of information where the advertiser could find such costs include the IATA list of ticket and airport taxes and fees, which is available through IATA's website. One could also find the information from a computer reservation system. All advertisements placed in non-interactive media must indicate the readily accessible location where the consumer can obtain the name of such costs that the advertiser does not collect but will be required of the traveler to complete their travel by air. The advertisement might, for instance, make reference to an advertiser's website where a consumer can obtain this information or provide a toll-free number that a consumer can call during the advertiser's business hours to speak to a sales representative. For interactive media advertisement, information or link regarding the names of such charges can be provided on the website. I would like to now go over a couple of ad examples with you. While the agency will not pre be pre-approving advertisements, I will walk you through some examples of the right and wrong way to advertise prices and where and when ads need to comply. This example does not need to comply with the regulations, as no price appears in the advertisement. However, once the consumer accesses the website and an air service price is displayed, the advertiser is obligated to comply with the requirements. This example is not compliant because it does not include the total price, does not mention if the air service is one way or round trip, and does not clearly mention the destination, that is the name of the city in California. The following examples are provided as compliant, non-interactive media ads, which could appear in print, broadcast, and social medias. These ads could be used in newspapers, magazines, billboards, flyers and pamphlets, on the television, on the radio, or be used through tweets, certain Facebook posts, and YouTube videos. In this example, all the required elements are there. The travel period, the type of travel, the origin and destination, the booking period, the third party charges, and of course, the total price. The contact information is also there so that the consumers may get a breakdown of taxes, fees, and charges. In this one, information has been added with regards to amounts of taxes, fees, and charges. Since this advertisement appears in a non-interactive media, these amounts are not required to be listed if contact information is provided to allow the consumer to obtain further information on the breakdown of the third-party taxes, fees, and charges. It is the same situation in this example. As the advertisement is not interactive, the advertiser is not required to provide a breakdown of the taxes, fees, and charges, but must provide a location where the consumer can readily obtain this information. However, the total advertised price must include taxes, fees, and charges. In this example, the departure tax is mentioned, but as this is not an interactive advertisement, it is not mandatory for the advertiser to indicate it. However, the advertiser must still provide a location to readily obtain other prescribed information. The advertisement discloses the total price to be paid to obtain a ticket included of advertiser imposed fees and charges, that is air transportation charges, and third party charges, that is taxes, fees and charges. 
Round trip services advertised on an each way basis must make a mention that the price is obtainable only if both directions are purchased and must be 50% of the round trip price. Since this ad is in a non-interactive media, the name of known taxes, fees, and charges that are not collected by the advertiser but have to be paid to travel can be indicated in the ad but is not required to be. In this case, a mention is made of a departure tax. This is an example of a compliant ad using an interactive media, which could include online booking systems and telephone-based services, such as call centers and service desks. This is provided as an example only. I remind you that the agency considers that the first price represented to the consumer should be the total price. When a consumer hovers over a selected fare, a pop-up box appears giving a breakdown of the advertiser impost charges and fees under the heading Air Transportation Charges and third-party charges under the heading Taxes, Fees and Charges. When a consumer hovers over optional incidental services charges, a pop-up box appears with the additional charges listed that the consumer may incur. Advertiser can use another method of their choice. Acceptable display could involve a consumer clicking on the link to be taken to another page where the costs are listed, or scroll down method, or when the breakdown is already listed on the price list page. Regardless of the method of display that is chosen, it is mandatory that the breakdown be available within the interactive advertisement. We expect the consumer to not have to search through many layers of the carrier's website to find the required information. Let's now cover advertising queries by telephone. When responding to a telephone call from a consumer regarding the price of an air service, the advertiser's representative must initially inform the, care, the caller of the total price of the air service, inclusive of third-party taxes, fees, and charges expressed in Canadian dollars. As an example, the representative could say, the total price of the advertised flight is $550, which includes $140 in taxes, fees, and charges. The representative must also be prepared upon request to provide the name and amount of each third-party tax, fee, and charge collected by the advertiser, which, when added together, would equal the total amount. Upon request by the consumer, the advertiser's representatives must also provide the origin and destination, whether the service is one way or round trip, and any limitation that may exist with respect to availability or travel period. Must provide the cost or range of cost for optional incidental services, inclusive of applicable taxes. Must also provide the name of any additional charges that the advertiser does not collect but will be required of the traveler to complete their air service travel, such as departure tax. We have just covered the various elements of various media that determine advertisers' compliance. Now I will speak about the agency's power to ensure compliance. The agency expects all air price advertisers to comply with the regulations immediately. The agency uses a proactive and collaborative educational approach to ensure that advertisers are aware of their responsibility to comply. The agency also reaches out associations representing the air travel industry, as well as provincial government organizations dealing with travel agencies. Ensuring compliance with the regulations and implementing a program of affecting education and enforcement are crucial to meeting the objectives of the regulations. The agency monitors compliance with the regulatory requirement and enforces these requirements where necessary using its authority under the Act to monitoring, compliance verification, and enforcement measures. It is within the agency's authority to determine whether an advertiser has met the advertising requirements of the regulations. 
In addition, the agency may order a person to make the changes necessary to conform to the regulations to bring about compliance. The Canadian Transportation Agency designated provision regulations identify the provisions of the regulation which, if contravened, are subject to administrative monetary penalties. As you can see on this slide, the agency may impose fines of up to $5,000 for an individual and $25,000 for a corporation, where either has been found guilty of an offence as a result of contravening the regulations. As with all agency enforcement actions, the determination of what corrective measures or penalty are required in the case of a contravention is based on a number of factors, including the frequency and nature of the offence. For example, a level 4 penalty would apply to an advertisement that does not disclose the total price in Canadian dollars, and if the total price is also indicated in another currency, which currency it is or one that does not disclose the point of origin and the point of destination, if the service is one way or round trip, or any limitation with respect to booking or travel availability periods. As for a level two penalty, it would apply in the case of an advertisement that does not disclose the name and amount of applicable taxes, fees, or charges. This concludes the presentation. I hope you have found this webinar informative and supportive of your compliance efforts. We invite you to visit the agency's website at the address provided on this slide to view the information repository on all-inclusive air price advertising. Information on this site will be updated as further inquiries are treated and clarification is needed. Thank you for your participation in this session.